Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi. Hello, James. How are you? Wait Welcome to Let's Talk About God. <laughs> Hi, Ipe. And uh, how's your headache going, Ipe? I'm not feeling too well. I may have a smile on my face for the whole day. Just in string, strenuous, very strenuous, very strenuous, oh, very mm. painful. Yeah. And unrelenting, unrelenting. Wow. Mm. Uh, we will pray for you in our heart. Yeah, I know you will do very well. How are you, Rod? I'm well, thank you. Uh, that's good. Anthony, how are you? You're very well. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thanks for joining us this week. Today, IPA will be sharing a 20-minute sermon on the cross and its meaning to you personally, uh, which will be followed by question and answer. Following the sermon will be open up, will be open up for uh, the program for question answer in regard to IPES sermon. So please keep all questions relevant to the sermon topic. The questions are not solely for our panel to answer, but also for our guests on the program too. So feel free to provide a short answer with Bible verses or a Bible story or a personal experience relevant to the question at end to answer with Bible, sorry, uh, to, sorry, uh, or Bible history or the personal experience relevant to the question at end to support your answer. Remember, we're not here to say which one who's right or wrong. We're here just to share the word of God. Amen. Lately, lastly, this is a very open forum, and there may be and there may be different point of view from topic to topic or verse to verses, but we must all remember to respect each other, each other view, including the view of other denomination and agree to disagree respectfully if necessary. As Paul said in Philippians chapter three, verse 15. Now, we invite our brother, Anthony, to pray for us, please. Thank you, Anthony. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for the opportunity to speak with you, to ask for your help. As we do our study today we contemplate the cross so we ask for assistance so that the things we think about may be the things that are true that are beautiful that are worthwhile amen. so may you please join us in all this amen amen, amen. 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 hello guys um yeah like james has said i just said to him earlier i don't feel too well on my headache and yeah maybe it's the big c oh, or let me not say the big c the big what do they say called COV-19, you know? So um, um, I don't know what it is. I just don't feel too well. Um, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, this subject for today, it's, it's a subject that I can share um, as a sermon and share with you ideas and thoughts about it but I would have loved us to share our own thoughts about it. You know, in society today, we find that there's many ideas or many meanings that people give the cross. And if you study history, you would find that this events did really happen. Um, and people would just say, yeah, it's just a man who died on a cross. Others would say, no, it has much more meaning for them. It has changed their lives. Others say um, uh, there's no meaning in it. Um, it's just another person. Um, today, the question comes to us is, what does it mean to you? Um, um, like I said, you know, 
Um, I put this um, quote down earlier this week and I shared it with you guys. Did the cross change the direction of humanity? Did it change the lives of many? And how? Can we share that life-changing experience? So I would like each one of us maybe just to share how we can relate from the time of the cross. Did things change lives of people? Did it change your life? What does it mean to you? Um, it means a lot to me because um, it gives me so much understanding of what I'm going through and, and um, what, what I can see the future will lead to and what the past is, is learned me about the future as well. So um, I, I really appreciate the understanding of what Jesus wanted to say, what God wanted to say about himself, what God wanted to say about humanity, what God wanted to say about sin. And it's so important for us to understand these principles in context of the cross. Um, if we put it in any other context, we wouldn't have a clearer picture of which play, uh, who is playing what role, what's actually happening. And that is why we need to read more into the meaning of the cross. Um, there's a few verses I want to share off, off out front, and then I would want you to share, and I'll probably close off and share my testimony. I've probably shared a little bit now, but um, uh, these verses say this. Um, it's, and not only so, but we also, we also, not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received atonement. We feel the joy in God, in, in our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it's a powerful verse, Romans 5 verse 11, that we have now received atonement. I'm going to read another verse. I'm going to read in another context. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. So beautiful to, to, to know that God has made us friends. Do we feel like that? Do we feel like our re relationship with God has been mended? Amen. Um, do, we, do we know that? Do we feel the peace that we have between God and us when we, when we are in this relationship? I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 1 verse 18. It says, for the message about Christ's death on a cross, it's nonsense. Like I said, for many, it's nonsense to those who are being lost. But for us who are being saved, it is God's power. And what is that power? We see the joy we will have in the relationship that we have with the Father. But many people don't find their joy, even when they are going to church. They don't find the peace. And they don't find the power of God. So I just want to put a few things out there for, for you guys. Is, um, what do you think the cross means to you in all society, in all spheres of your life? What does it mean to you? Uh, if, if nobody going, I'm just, I'm just share what I learned. Yes, um, I find someone, I find someone who speak similar like, like we believe. And I love it. And he put it in a simple way to understand the cross and also the atonement. Yeah. And I said, um, I will read those uh, statement and uh, we see how we're going. Now, he said, his name is Maurice Atonement, page 195. You can check it anytime you want. He said, God and merited forgiveness through grace demonstrate that God is merciful and compassionate. But Leon Morris suggests 
some would be tempted to doubt is justice. Oh. Not, not anymore. Paul oh. is saying in Romans chapter 3, verse 24 to 26, the cross demonstrates the justice of God. Oh. It is not the fact that God forgives that show him to be righteous, but the fact that he forgives in a certain way, the way of the cross. God does not set aside the moral law when he forgives. Oh. Neither does he abolish the penalty. Okay. Remember Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wage of sin is death of the broken law. He said, neither does he abolish the penalty of the broken law. To the contrary, Christ not only kept God law, but he became sinful for us. Oh. Uh, not sinful, sorry, sin for oh. us in, in, in King James Version. And died the death that was ours that we might have his righteousness. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. The significance of the cross for God. D. Martin Lloyd John set forth the importance of Romans chapter 3, verses 25 to 26. God offer him so that by his blood he should become the mean by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. In the past, he was patient and overlook people's sin. Indeed, I, I, I know it, I experience it, and I know I can, I, can, I can say, yes, I believe it. But in the present times, he deal with their sin. How he did that? In order, uh, we can see on we, when we look on the cross, we can see it in order to demonstrate his righteousness. In his way, in this way, God shows that he himself is righteous and that he put right everyone who believe in Jesus. Now, when he point out that verses 25 and 26, I highlight something in infinitely more important than the justification of human beings. So often we, uh, are Christian talking a lot about justification, but the cross is a vindication of the character of God. Hmm. The cross not only shows the love of God more glorious, gloriously, than anything else. It show his righteousness, his justice, his holiness. On Calvary, God was making a way of salvation so that you and I might be forgiven. Amen. But he had to he had to do so in a way that we leave his character inviolate. God was declaring publicly once and forever his eternal justice and eternal love never separate them for they belong together. Lloyd John in chapter uh, Roman chapter 3 verse 20 to 4 chapter 4 to 25 page 106 to 108 and then you can also read uh, in 97. My point is, as I pass it, we can ask question. 
was Christ's death necessary for the atonement? If we have a look in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, he said, for the life of the, of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you and to the altar to make atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that make atonement for the soul. In Romans chapter five, verse nine and 11, much more than having more, having now been justified by, by his blood or by his death, the same thing, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Verse 11 he said, and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Okay. Romans chapter eight, chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Now, first John 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleans us from all sin. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 said, And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the king of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sin in his own blood. Mm. Atonement represents reconciliation. In Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, you know, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. When, 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 it, uh, when a person lost his blood, he will die. That shows us uh, many doctors as well know that life is in the blood. And I have given it to you. But upon, I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your soul. For it is the blood that make atonement for the soul. I prefer to stop here and, and let you, I have a lot to, to say, but I, I prefer listen to another person as well and what their opinion on that. Mm. I think James, like you said there, um, you know, your question where you said, um, does, does, do we need the death of Jesus Christ? For sure, I believe we need the, the, the life and death in, in, of Jesus Christ because um, like you explained, the blood represents life and what it life means to us. But, um, not but, sorry, I just want to add more on to that. It said, is it, um, there's a phrase where Jesus says, no, no one loves another person when somebody gives his life to a friend, you know? Mm. And, 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 it live, and life lives like that. Um, society lives like it. Nature lives like it. Everything around us gives of itself to one another. That is the design of God, you know? And when we were in dire straits, born in sin, like your... your um, your sermons two weeks before speaking about sin. We are broken people. We are sick people. We are hurting people. And God came down to restore them. And, 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 and the first place he starts, he starts with the restoration of his relationship with us. And to restore that relationship with us, it can only be God that had to give his life for us. And you were speaking about forgiveness. You know, we love our children so much that we would forgive them for anything. Because we don't want to, we don't want to punish them. They're big enough. You know, our children, some of our children are old enough to think for themselves. But we know that the consequences and the choices they make in life will punish them. Um, and, and the only thing we want to do is we want to be there to help them. 
and they must know that they are forgiven from us. If they don't trust us to know that they can come back to us, that they can say, Dad, Mom, I'm sorry, can you help me? And we've seen many a times parents would help their children in any situation. Now God says, who, who are we of this earth, humans? God has much greater love than what we have in our hearts. So God came himself and died everything and showed us what sin does to us so that we don't have to go through this. We don't have to suffer. We don't have to. Yes, we are suffering in this world. There's certain difficulties. But there is peace in Christ Jesus. Because our foreparents has made that enmity or that we are enemies when we are born with God. We need to learn about God in a new way to actually heal ourselves. And most psychologists will tell you Healing always starts in the mind first, and then it will go through the body. If your mind isn't right, if your mind isn't, your mindset isn't right, you, you, your whole body dies. And I think, and I think um, then you'll make right decisions. You'll start looking at stuff, stuff differently the way you looked before. But in trying to answer your question, I do believe it was so important for many to see that God, the God of the heaven, the God of creation, became a little child, lived a life, and died at the hands of his created being. And says, I still love you, and I still care for you. It is the most powerful evidence of God's love that any person can need to in a very, very difficult situation. Can you say, um, so often we say Jesus Christ came and died in our place and died for us. If someone asking us a question, how is if someone said, how you will explain Romans chapter 6, verse 23? What that means to you? How, how does that work? What, 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 what you will say to, to this person? You know the... the the what, does it, what does it say, that verse? Sorry? Romans chapter 6, 23? Yes. What does it yeah. say? How you will explain that to the person? I know. Is, I don't know. I have to read the verse. What is it? Yeah. Romans chapter 6. is not in front of me. Romans yeah, chapter I'll, 6, verse 23. Romans. Hang on. Chapter 6, verse 23. Thank you. How we will how we will read that to make that and to make people understand what that means when Jesus Christ died? Twenty-three. For the wages of sin is death, but the yeah. gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what it says. Yeah. How we will explain Romans six verse twenty-three? Yeah, that uh, involved Jesus into it. This this is the thing because for me personally mm. it has been a tremendous long very long journey mm. because i've been in the church since i was a child even though my family wasn't christian but i attended a christian school because it was one block from my place anyway so you you start learning first thing when when you go to to a church or somebody teaches you and you have all these things taught to you um for example when what what does it mean as you said jesus died for me well, what, what is that what, what why jesus had to come and be sinless why did he have to die in the first place did he, he have to die how big was the sacrifice of Christ? And I had all these questions through the years and you come to upset one, one answer here, one answer there. But for me, and I'm talking personally, has been a very, very long journey to understand because I have in my mind, I have a very, what I think is a logical mind if things do not make sense, I have a problem with that. It doesn't sink in. Things have to make sense. And not everything made sense 
up to just very recently. In fact, it was this Friday when I was studying uh, the Sabbath school lesson on uh, Christ, our priest, that I went to the cross, that some of the penny drop, you know? And I went to uh, Karen, my wife, and I said, I think I finally understood how big was the sacrifice of Christ at the cross? And she said to me something that actually was very good because it pushed me to, to think about it. She, she asked me, and how that, understanding that, she didn't even know what I understood by that, but she asked, and how that is going to make you a better person? How that is going to change your life? Are you going to be a better person by understanding that? And I went, actually, yes, I think it's going to make me a better person. Mm. And she said, and why? And I said, because if someone has a set of rules and it tells you, you have to do this and do this and do this or don't do this, uh, like the Ten Commandments type of thing, and you try to follow, you find that it's pretty much impossible because we have a sinful nature, right? But if you try to do it on your own, you'll find it that it's very difficult until you almost give up on that. And you think, and you think this is almost impossible, you know, what's the point? And, but when you look at the cross, you look at Jesus mm -hmm. and you really understand what he went through mm -hmm. in order for us to have this virus, which is our sinful nature, mm. get back in communion with God, when we understand the sacrifice, then you think, you know what? Because of love, it's like a magnet. You get attracted to it. Amen. Sure. So you do what he wants you to do, not because it's true. I mean, you know it's right, but not because he had to, not because you, it's because you want to please him, it's because you know that it's right, it's because you love him, and because you know that that incredible sacrifice, it would mean nothing if, if you don't do it, but you end up doing it because you feel attracted to it. It's like the law of worship. You worship this God, and it's like a magnet that you want to be like him. Mm. Didn't Jesus said, be like, be perfect, like our father is perfect. So you want to be perfect, but not in, in the sense of obligation. You know, it's not that, oh, I need to do this. And it's because you just want to, you want to be like that, yes. you know? You, sorry, I just want to jump in. You love actually what God tells you to do. You love it. You fall in love with the law. You want to do it because you know exactly. the right it's, thing to do. Just like what, you fall in love with God, you fall in love with the laws and it writes it on your heart. It, it illumines, it, 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 it enlightens your mind to see the path that you need to follow, you know. Exactly. It's what David wrote in the Psalms, mm. that the laws of God are precious, more than gold. Yeah. You know, they, they rejoice in the law. You rejoice in the law of God, not because it's a set of rules that you have to do it. It's because you love the law of God, mm. because you know that it's right and it only brings blessings to you and to your fellow man. Mm. And understanding the cross and the sacrifice and i just want to finish with with this thought that i had on on, on friday two days ago um when jesus was dying on the cross he said this incredible sentence that puzzled puzzled me for years you know my god my god why have you forsaken me you know that puzzles me for many years, I, I thought, why, why did he say that? He was one with God. And all of a sudden, in the most 
you know, dramatic moment, he said that it was almost like he had been separated from him. And you know what? That's what was occurring. He was actually, God had to separate and let him go. And that was the sacrifice when you are united with one person and then had to be separated. That is the most incredible sacrifice that Christ had to do. He, and that's why he died. If the wages of sin is death and Jesus was sinless, he shouldn't have died. Hey, that, that remember about making sense? I always thought, well, if Jesus, the wages of sin is death and Jesus did not sin, why did he die? He didn't sin. And the way just of sin is dead. So why did he die? Did he pay anything? No, he didn't pay anything. Nobody was uh, sending him a bill to pay. That's my opinion. Hang on. I'm going to finish. <laughs> yep. um, I lost my thought. Anyway, why did, why did he die? Yeah. If he was sinless. Okay. Who is the source of life? The source of life is God. He was in the human and, and Christ was in the human form, at least half of it. And in, because he was dying at the cross for the sins of humanity and he was sinless in order for him to actually die, the source of life had to let him go had to separate at that time. And Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So there was a big, incredible separation. And then he died and he said, he's finished, he's done. You know, I, I raised my case. And then he died. He knew he was going to raise in, th in, th in three days. Actually, it wasn't three days, but you know how biblical days are counted. So he knew was, he was going to, to be resurrected because he was sinless. He could not experience a second death because the second death, second death is eternal. So he rose on, on Sunday and he knew that. He trusted God when he died. Even he trusted that separation as painful as, as it was that uh, caused his death. He trusted God that much. And that trust then is passed on to us like this virus that we have, which is a sinful nature. Then Jesus made that bridge back again with God. And we can yes. partake of that. Yes. So for me, when I look at the cross, is when I understand the sacrifice of God. Amen, my brother. Oh. How far he went in order for us to come back to him. Mm. And it's not Great. a sacrifice that is, that what we're taught at, 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 at church sometimes, that it says, oh, Jesus died for you, so all your sins are erased. No, we have to change our hearts. Yes. We have to change our ways. We have to go back and be like Jesus was. Amen. Mm. So the cross means everything to me. It explains everything. Roman, Romans 6, verse 23, it's very powerful verses. As you just said, Rod, you're right. Nobody present any bill in front of Jesus. You have to pay something. But the verse itself, when, 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 you work, when you're working, you have to receive a wage. Right? And when you are sinner, because you work, uh, in the Bible explains that very clear. And uh, when you commit sin, that is the work of the flesh, mm. right? And what you, 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 your wage is, when you commit sin, your wage is death. But Jesus Christ, as you just said, is a sin, sinless person. But when he, when, he, when he take flesh and blood upon himself, like us, 
And he's not a, sin, a sinful person because he was not born like us, right? And he is a, he is a sinless person, but in a, in a flesh, in, in blood, in flesh, in bone like us, just to give us a demonstration what, it, what will be our wage if we don't trust him, if we don't believe him, that will be our wage is death. But not that death we die every day, people die every day, as you just mentioned yourself, is a second death. But Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross, maybe Satan said, I got everything. But when he raised on, on Sunday, he is in trouble because he overcome the second death. But Jesus Christ now said to us, if we trust him, if we believe in him, we will not go through the second death. We will overcome the second death because of his victory over the second death. That's what this verse said for me. But personally, uh, God said, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, the victory he did, it become our victory as well. Yeah, like you said, he gave us that same victory. He closed the gap for us. Mm. Was in our situation as a sinner. But Jesus, I love what you said at the end. He trusted so much in God that he closed the gap of humanity with us. So the mm. gap of trust was rebuilded in Christ. Now Jesus, even when he went through the darkest times of our lives, we must trust God that God will do the things for us that he promises. Um, you wanted to say something in, in um, Anthony? Yeah, um, this is really good. Um, so for me, um, the, there's the dying part of the cross where, you know, you see him on the cross. But really, I think to track Jesus from, from the beginning of all his sufferings, is quite stunning. And um, for, for me, one of the most amazing things is when he's being tried and they're asking him a thousand questions. And this is someone who hasn't had any sleep, you know, because he was praying and they disturbed him. Um, well, he knew they were coming, but he didn't, he hadn't slept. And he had a lot of things on his mind. <clears throat> his, his glorious silence, that's what I would like to call it. The way he's so unafraid in the middle of all those attacks. He is just, you know, he's like the still waters. He knows what's happening. He's trusting in God. He's not a victim. He's not saying, oh my God, it's not fair. Don't do this to me. I know what you did. Like he's not arguing, you know? He's not arguing. He is there. And it's, it's the way he carries himself that moves so many people around him. Pilate gets afraid. He's not sure what is happening here. And the thief on the cross then asks to be, you know, asked to be saved. And then the, uh, the soldier confesses that the, truly this is the son of God. The son of God. You know? But he's not saying anything. He's not saying anything. It's the way he does it. He's silent. He's not silent like he's sulking. He's silent because he knows there's nothing to say right now. The, what, his actions do all the talking. His, his calmness. For me, when I was looking at it, I think on Saturday, yesterday, just his silence, the way he carries himself when he knows I'm being falsely accused because they kept on sending all these different witnesses who were contradicting each other. He didn't say, you see, they're contradicting each other. Why am I here? <laughs> you know, he didn't do that. He was, he only answered when he needed to. So Ooh. for me, just that calmness that he exhibits, it's, it's, a, it's a marvelous thing to see. Ooh. Because so many of us just get afraid easily. And just his, his coolness through it all, 
It's lovely. It is lovely. He had a good preparation at Gethsemane. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 he almost died in Gethsemane. He almost died. God sent this God sent the angel to to support him. To help him through a very difficult time. I had it in here, but I don't want to share too much about that. Um, Anthony, it's it's so important for us to know that last thing you were saying about um, we we can do it because of Christ Jesus. We can do it. We we can become like Jesus Christ in in many ways. Um, if I want to share my part to to this. Um, I really believe the cross was hell. The cross was hell, but only Jesus experienced it. Um, maybe I learn more about it. Maybe I won't say it in the two years, but at this time, I believe it was hell. It was a place of darkness. The movie Passion of Christ, and I'm not sure if everybody watched it, um, some people actually walked out. I just kept on crying. I couldn't take it anymore. But focuses on the physical aspects of Jesus' suffering. But there was more to that hour of Jesus. You were speaking about that, that time he spent, that hour of quietness. Um, Anthony, Jesus' sacrifice entails much more than the physical suffering. And like you said, James, Jesus suffered the full wages of sin, which is the second death. Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 40. Hang on, hang on. Did you say that Jesus suffered the second death? The full wages of sin, yes. But he didn't die. The he didn't death. die the second death. No, he suffered the second death. He, what, uh, that, what's the I, I understand what you try to say. You try to say he overcome the second death because yes. there is no sin in him. So when you suffer the second death, when you're suffering something, you're not dead yet. That's what I mean. But the second death is eternal death. So how could he suffer the second death if no so he's, he's overcome? I'm confused. He's overcome the second okay. death. So oh yeah, he that's what he wants to say. To oh, okay. You. So, 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 so the second death is, is, is also suffering. It's not just the death. If the second death was death, then we could say the first death is death. There's much more to the second death than the first death. The first death is asleep. You just go and you don't, and you just break yeah. up. The second death, you can do that the same, but there's much more to that. We know there will be suffering. We know which is a separation, eternal yes, separation from yes, God. Yes, the suffering of the second death. The first death, you don't experience it. Maybe some people experience it a little bit, the separation between family. Mm. But, but, but the spirit has not really left them to make up their mind about God at that moment sometimes. Maybe some is feeling it. I don't understand it perfectly. But I do believe the second death, the wages of sin, Jesus went through that what sin does to us. So Matthew, um, and then this, this, is, this is what I'm trying to explain. So in Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 to 40, some of the Pharisees and scribes, and some of the scribes and Pharisees answered saying, teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, an evil adulterous generation seeks after signs and no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, Jonah chapter 2, verse 1, 1 and 2, and I'm, and I'm going to go step by step, and I'm going to speak about our lives too in this, you know. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish, fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And I heard, and, and he heard me out of the belly of hell. 
It says out of the belly of hell. So he didn't die the second death, but he was in hell. The belly of hell cried, I, and thou hearest my voice, which actually is prophetically speaking about Jesus Christ. On the cross, Jesus cried out from the depths of hell, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Right? And, and, and sometimes when we, when we go through life, we feel forsaken. Um, I've, I, at times, many times felt forsaken. I, for times, many times felt I needed a miracle for God to show me his love. And I shared it. I don't know when did I share my testimony when I was laying flat on the ground. And God answered my prayers after three days, after many years, because I was looking for a sign. And the only sign that God gave me was the love that he has for me through Jesus Christ. It was the only sign for me to have. And there was nothing more I needed because there was nothing more that I needed to do. It was all God had needed to do it in me. Verse 3, Jonah chapter 2, verse 3. For thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas, and the floods compass me about. All thy billows, which means the sea, and thy waves pass over me. The depth is an the depth here, which it speaks about in the depths of the sea, is another reference to the beast of hell. Um, Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 2, Son of man, say to the priest of Tyre, Thus says the Lord God, because your heart is proud and you have said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of the gods, in the heart of the seas. We also know Leviathan also came out of the sea. In the Old Testament, sea represented hell. It represented a place of Satan. We also know that the, 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 the beast of revelation comes out of the sea. And we know it's people and we know what the sea represents people. And we will see it further. You'll see the experience of Jonah. I'm not saying that Jonah exactly experienced what God goes through. But in our lives, we go through the same experience. When we've lost somebody close, when we, when we go through very hard difficulties, we start to make the same questions. God, where are you? What are you doing? Why are you so quiet? Why aren't you doing anything? And the cross is an answer for that as well. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Verse 4, yet I will look again towards thy holy temple. The waters come, come past me about everybody, the waters around me, even to the soul, to the depth close me around, around about. The weeds were wrapped around my head, cast out of sight. Parallels Christ's feeling of rejection and separation from God. The weeds symbolizes the crown of Jesus, that he was all weeded up. You know, sometimes our minds feel so closed up by the difficulties, the thorns of this life, the difficulties of this life. And we feel so sometimes rejected, so sometimes alone. And there are many that feel like it today. And there will come a time that it's even worse today. We, 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 we don't feel the pressure of Satan yet because God is protecting us. But there will come a time which these protections are taken away. And we'll feel it from every side. And what do we hold on at that time? Who do we hold on to? Because our minds cannot then see clearly who are we supposed to hold on. Where are we supposed to go? And the crowns of life just keeps us. The, the weeds of life keeps us from seeing these things. And Jesus shows us. Jesus shows us. And Jonah here shows us how we can overcome, we can build this bridge back. Verse 6 says, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with the bars was about me forever. Eternal death. It feels like it was, there was one place that I read in a book that God could not see through the portals of death. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. Jonah felt 
that because of his sin, he would be stuck in a grave forever. The earth with the bars was about me forever. Foretells the second death experience, like I say. Every fiber of Jesus' being, all his senses thrust upon his heart and mind, and he was going to die. He was going to cease to exist forever. Moreover, our sins buried Jesus under an ocean of despair and darkness. You look at the people that was around him. Who was around the cross? Hey, they were shouting at him. They were saying, you are cursed. Why don't you get yourself down? And that didn't help him at all. They didn't help him. And it felt like darkness was surrounding him, like the clouds of darkness that, that the Bible describes there. Darkness filled his mind, his heart. And, 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 and we'll see further what happened to Jonah. Quickly, I'll finish up. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered. This is now what is important. When my soul fainted within me, I remember. I remember what? I remember the Lord. And my prayer came into unto thee, into thine holy temple. Jesus' soul fainted within him as well, to a point of breaking his heart. He too remembered the Lord and cried out with a prayer of supplication. He remembered his father. When we see the cross, do we remember who God is? Do we, are we reminded by the love of God? They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercies. They observe lying vanities. They that observe the cross. Lying vanities for their own mercy. So they, they go after the vanities of this earth. And their own mercy. Jonah and Jesus both knew that lying vanities of false gods, they were running after false gods, these people, false gods, the people around the cross, separate them from the merciful Father. Lying vanities can also result from accepting Satan's cruel lies about our merciful Father. God never accepted these lies. But I will sacrifice, verse 9, this is Jonah going on, but I will sacrifice, remember he's still in the belly of the whale, but I will sacrifice un, unto thee with my voice of thanksgiving. He's, he's, he's already praising God in the belly of the whale. I will pay that I have vowed, and listen to his word, salvation is of the Lord. Oh my word. When I read that, I said, wow, he knew where he could find his strength in, in God himself. The phrase salvation of the Lord indicates that Jesus' faith, faith rested entirely on his father. Jesus placed his soul, his existence in his father's hands. Can we do that today in our lives? Can we see that God loves us so much? And can we trust him in such a way that we lay, lay our souls in, 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 in before him? Verse 10, and the Lord spake unto the fish. And what happened? It vomited him out. Jonah upon the dry land. So, by faith, Jesus won the victory. And many people say, where did Jesus have faith? He called out. No, he says, Father, I give you my spirit. He spoke the words in trusting his father, trusting who his father was and who, what he knew about his father. Jesus won the victory over death, hell, and Satan's lies. As Jonah spent three days of his soul anguish in the belly of the whale, in the midst of dark seas, 
Jesus spent three days in the heart of darkness. When the rude multitude sees multitude sees Jesus, he entered into a grasp of satanic powers and darkness. But that grave could not hold him. So my brothers, there is hope for any person in this world because God's love is great. No greater love does he have for each one of us as he loves us as a friend. Very good, Hyper. Um, we, we are emotional human beings, right? Some of us are more than others. And somehow, you mentioned a very good point. There could be a time when we're going to be trial and we may not have that emotion that maybe God is with us. Yes. So the same way that Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Maybe we won't feel that emotion. Oh, God is with me. But at the, at the very end, Jesus said, it is finished. Those words indicate that he knew his mission. He knew what he had to do. Mm. He knew what needed to be accomplished, regardless of the pain that he was experiencing at the time. So there may be a time when we also have to draw on that yes. and be, how should I say, no, so emotional about it but more yeah as you said trust and know what is happening and stick with 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 the plan jesus had a mission and so we should have this mission ourselves to do his will i want to 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 clear what I just said before, maybe someone might listen and uh, try to get confused in what one thing I said about hell, when Jesus Christ goes through hell, right? And uh, if you have a look in Psalm 16, verse 10, I just read it in King James Version. He said, for thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Corruption. Corruption, yes. When David said that, he's talking for Jesus Christ. But mm -hmm. when we're going, to, when we're going to, uh, to, that is hell. He's talking about hell. Yeah. But that is, this hell he's talking is, is grave. Is grave. That means Jesus Christ will not remain in the grave. On three days, Jesus Christ will raise up. Now, we're just going to read in Revelation, Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Uh, look at this word hell again. You see, it's the same thing, but uh, the hell grave is in, in, uh, in, in Hebrew, it's shohel, but uh, the, the word hell in uh, New Testament, Greek, it's Hades, Amen. right? In uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, it said, and death and hell, the same thing in English, because they not make the difference there, uh, were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And this hell of fire is not the grave. It's, Shoha, it's Hades, hell fire. Yeah, but maybe somebody might just listen and say, what's going on? Jesus Christ go to the hell and fire and then come out, you know, and I try to make that clear because it's the same word hell in both ways. 
but uh, we have to go through Greek and Hebrew to understand what we're talking about. Thank you for for allowing me to, to share that. Yeah. Um, thanks, James. There's many aspects of 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 um, of of understanding the Bible. Mm. So important for us to understand um, the cross in 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 its essence, because um, the cross really explains. Um, there's a lot there. <laughs> there is a lot there. Like, like if 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 God had to just destroy Adam and Eve and Satan in the beginning, right? Would 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 we have understood what was actually happening to them? Would we have understood what sin does to us? We would have thought God did it to us, wouldn't we? We would have said, "Oh, God must have." kill them so we must just obey God because if we don't obey him he will kill us mm. but God himself came to show the consequences of sin mm. there was no hand of God on, on him you know there was nothing that God was doing to Jesus in any way it was sin it was the wrestle with sin what sin does to us and, 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 and God brought humanity through Jesus Christ, to a very special place, to a very special place. He built a bridge that, that to tell us we can follow that path. There's a verse that I've read. Oh, I wish I had that verse now. It actually says what God has done, we will then follow that same path. And like you have said, Rod, and like you have said, James, we are privileged to, and Anthony, we are privileged to know God in such a way, in such beauty. It's, it's a horrible thing to, to say, and like we can get emotional because we, we feel so close to God when we see what he has done. But what he, what he really has done is the beauty. You see, in in the world today, they will see like the movie Passion of Christ. They will see the ugliness of the cross. But if you love that veil and you look underneath that veil, you see the beauty of the cross. Of what it actually does to us, to our lives, to the people around us, to our families' lives. It has power it has power to change anything you look at the world today and I want to come back to this point and you look at the world before Christ man there's something that has shifted in the lives of many people's lives today we walk out there there's water that runs through taps there's a sewage system there's so many other things that's being done because many people didn't think about themselves. They thought about others first. And that is so important that we, that we appreciate what God has done for us. Technology would have never increased like it did if it wasn't for God. People sitting for hours looking into a microscope People sitting for hours trying to work out how, how to make things better for other people. And there was never a reward. Maybe some were looking for a reward. But most of those people did it out of passion to know something more and to give to society. And those things in the world changes the world. It, Jesus gave of himself. He gave all and he changed us today. So there's huge appreciation in society for the life and death of Jesus Christ. And let's not forget his resurrection. That Yahweh could not keep him. The deepest place of Satan could not keep him. The, the demonstration Jesus gave on the planet Earth, that is stuck in my mind forever. Yeah. Romans chapter 3, verse 25. 26 that is stuck in my mind forever this demonstration no one can can do better than what jesus christ have done 
You, you, you can't miss out. When you look at it, you can't miss out. You, you have to work very hard to miss out. To look at it. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Anybody want to say anything in closing so I can pray? No, all good. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Holy Heavenly Father, we truly appreciate the love you have for us. And I hope we can say get some glimpses of it, you know. Uh, there's a verse in Ephesians, it says, it's your love is so wide, we can't get around it. It's so high, we can't get over it. So deep, you can't get under it. Father, we can never comprehend the fullness, but the glimpses that we have of where we are in this world and what love represents sometimes for many young people and even older people. The misunderstanding of love or what love should be like. If that person mm -hmm. doesn't do something for me, I won't do it for that person because that person isn't good enough for me. Father, even when we weren't doing the right stuff for you, we were still good enough for you. You still come down to us to a place, a dark place. Surrounded yourself with darkness so that you can bring us into the marvelous light of your love. Hmm. Father, we are so thankful for the privilege of the gift of your word which is in writing and the word of Jesus Christ in his life and death and resurrection. It's continually revealing itself to us as you are our Savior. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.